Hello, welcome to this GTK tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the examples shown in the gallery section of the GTK website. So uh, let's go there. And in particular, I will show you how to reproduce the built-in example uh, number one, this guy. So for this, you need to open a uh, terminal like I did here. And here, I will assume that you downloaded and decompressed the TTK source code and data uh, tarballs to uh, this directory here, TTK. There we go. And of course, that you successfully installed TTK. So we'll go ahead and go to the TTK data directory with this command here. And from there, we'll enter the command parview dash dash state states um, built in example number one dot pvsm and hit enter. Okay, and here we are. So what this example is showing is a toy example, a very standard uh, example in computational free dynamics, where you have some fluid coming from the top, you have an obstacle here, and this creates uh, some vortices uh, in the back of the obstacle. This is called uh, the Van Karman uh, vortex treat. And uh, in order to track uh, those vortices, what people do uh, usually when they are in 2D like this, they um, consider the curl of the flow displacement and uh, then consider the orthogonal component of this curl, the z component of this uh, vector here. And uh, this uh, orthogonal component uh, gives some hints about the, um, uh, the rotation direction of the vortices. So uh, the curl will point towards the screen uh, if it's uh, turning counterclockwise or the other way around. So here, what we did is that we extracted uh, the local minima and the local maxima of this um, uh, curl orthogonal um, component. And here, the low values are in blue and the high values in green. And those spheres in blue are the minima, which means it's that you have vortices uh, turning in one direction. And in green, the local maxima, which correspond to vortices turning in the other direction. Here in the middle, we've got exactly the same data set with uh, some uh, 3D elevation. So actually, we uh, used the Z coordinate to actually modify the surface and to display it in 3D. Here uh, on the top right corner, you have uh, what is called the persistence curve, which is a curve that describes the distribution of the pairs of critical points as a function of their persistence. And usually, uh, this curve is used to um, uh, find a proper uh, threshold for persistence and topological simplification. Because the way you read this curve is that you go from low values, where most of the critical points are above this persistence, and as you increase the persistence, you have less and less pairs of critical points that are more persistent than this threshold. And uh, when you arrive at the end of the spectrum here, on the right side, you only have uh, the most per persistent and dominant features. And what is interesting in practice is that you often find um, a sort of a flat plateau here that separates two uh, decreasing slopes. And um, this flat plateau often corresponds to a reasonable value uh, for topological simplification as it separates uh, noise here on the first slope from uh, the features on the second slope. Here at the bottom is another uh, representation of the uh, critical point, which is uh, called the persistence diagram. And this representation uh, represents each critical point pair with a vertical bar, and uh, the x uh, component of this bar corresponds to the data value at the critical point which created the pair, and the y uh, component at this um, critical point up top correspond to uh, the data value that destroyed the pair. So here the color coding for the critical points correspond to uh, that in the main view. And what is interesting here with this demo is that you can select the persistent threshold uh, that here is 0 0.2 and uh, you can decrease it to see how the data looked at the beginning, how noisy it was. And actually, if you decrease it further, you realize that uh, you had a lot of uh, uh, slight variations in the data, like here. Okay. So let's go back here and simplify uh, to the original setting. And you can even go further and you will see that the actual terrain here gets simplified too as you increase it. All right. So now 
I will show you how to uh, reproduce this uh, visualization from scratch. So here I close part of you and I will open it again with uh, the built-in example number one. And there we go. Okay. So first we'll uh, compute a tet mesh out of this. This will make our life easier when it comes to wrapping, but this is in theory not uh, necessary for TTK. I will rotate this by 90 degree and I will compute the derivatives of the flow. And here I will select vorticity here to make sure that the curl is computed. Right, so the curl is uh, defined on the faces, so we'll do uh, cell data to point data. There you go, to have the curl defined in each vertex. And now we'll compute uh, what we call vorticity. And we'll take the uh, Z component of the, of the gradient, like this. And this is this uh, scalar field here. We need to adjust uh, the uh, color map a bit, like this, like that this more towards the middle. Right, and there you go. Okay, so now we'll have a look, uh, we'll uh, have a look at the persistence curve here. So um, by the way, to apply some uh, processing on the data, you can either click on filters and access the different options the menus, like I explained in the previous tutorials. The TTK features are available in those same menus, or uh, to go faster, you can search for a feature with control space. So let's do this. Uh, persistence curve. Let's go. And here, by default, this uh, plugin has four outputs of part of you. We'll try to open them all, uh, but one is enough. So let's do this. And here, you want to select the persistence as an x-axis, and you want to display the number of pairs on the y-axis. You can change the color of the curve here, this thickness here. We can zoom on a particular part of the plot like this. And you can change uh, the labels uh, of the axis, for instance. Uh, this uh, can be done here. You want to make sure that you select uh, log scale for the left axis and the bottom axis to um, have this kind of a visible uh, slope here. All right. So now we'll display the uh, persistence diagram of the data. We'll take this. A, uh, diagram like this. We'll click on apply and here is the persistence diagram. We'll improve uh, the visualization a bit by putting some axes and some titles. So here birth and death. And uh, we will enhance this visualization and we'll do a specific processing for the diagonal. So we'll extract first the diagonal here. It's the one that has an identifier that is negative. Computer surface and a two. All right, and then we will put this black. All right, so now we'll extract the uh, actual persistence pairs. Those are have a uh, non-negative uh, identifier, like this. Okay, perfect. And then uh, we'll do some actual persistence threshold on top of it, like this. Let's say we go from there. Okay, and here we will. Uh, Call this persistent threshold. Okay, we'll put some spheres on that uh, to be able to display something smaller, smaller like this. And then put some color scheme like this, and uh, we'll put a surface here and some tubes. All right, and we have our, our persistence diagram here. All right, so uh, we make some simplification, let's say up to this level. All right, so you see that it's been cleaned out. And now we want to make sure uh, that we can simplify the actual data with this um, simplification level. So for this, uh, we'll click on the, we'll search for the topological simplification feature. Uh, the geometrical domain is the calculator here. This is where the curl is, um, the vorticity is defined. Then as constraints, we take uh, the persistence threshold here, and we make sure that the field vertex identifier is selected for this to work properly. All right, and there we go. So now we're going to compute the critical points of this with the vorticity, and we'll make sure that we select this checkbox such that the critical points identifier understands the simplification. 
Next, we take Sphere and we apply. All right, let's put three. So here we have all the critical points. Let's filter this out. We'll take only uh, the minima for the center of uh, half of the of the vortices. Okay, and we'll put this uh, in color like this. And then uh, we'll take the maxima. Go type index two. There we go. Oops. What did I do wrong? Here, sorry. Threshold index two. And there we go. And here we have the critical points, uh, the extrema that are located there. And it seems that the threshold that we use uh, is actually good to track the centers of the, of the vortices behind the obstacle. So here, if we were to decrease this, we would have uh, more noise appearing. So if you want to find a proper value for the simplification, usually you want to enter the beginning, uh, the middle of this plateau here, uh, which is pretty much in between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. So 0 0.02 seems to be a good value here. We can further improve uh, the visualization here by showing uh, some 3D elevation of this data. So let's take this guy, wrap by scalar. We use the normal here. We'll do this. Okay, here it is. We'll exaggerate a bit more here, like that. Okay, say 10 is probably good. Okay, now this will uh, recompute the uh, critical points. Oh, I forgot, we need to do the, the wrapping on this uh, topological simplification. Okay, so we'll do wrap scalar here. Again, sorry for this. We'll use the normal information and here 10. There you go. Okay. And now we'll extract this critical points. And here we want to make sure that this checkbox is selected to make sure that the critical points understand uh, the topological simplification. And we do apply, and then we put some spheres on top of it. We want to put more, bigger spheres like this, three. We want to uh, threshold to get only the minima here with index zero, zero. And here I will threshold to get only the maxima of index two. There we go, and we'll call it this by a critical type, and uh, this too. There we go, and we have pretty much uh, the visualization uh, that is built in. And here, if you do some uh, persistence-based simplification here, what's going to happen is that the terrain is going to be progressively simplified here, as you see. And here, we can do it again. All right, let's go back here. So at this point, you may want to uh, save the state of your demo to make sure uh, that you can uh, load the demo again uh, very quickly. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So here you saw how to use, uh, to track some vortices in a 2D CFD simulation uh, with topological data analysis and TTK. And that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.